word of God that's established in your heart. And that Logos word becomes the Rhema word of God, which is the in-season, in-time word of God in this moment. Is this making sense? You you know, and I wasn't even planning on going here, but... um, but, you know, I, I know some people with, um, you know, their, their preaching and, and, and rostering. It's like, you know, for the next month, we're going to preach on the book of Luke. And then the next month, we're going to go to Thessalonians. And, and then the next month, we're going to go to Titus. And then we're going to Philemon. And they've got this thing mapped up. And, and, and you know, that, that's totally fine. However, I've found for me, I don't even know what I'm going to say in 10 minutes' time. Because, because we're actually led by every word that proceeds his mouth. Are you following me? Yeah. Is, is, is the Logos is important, but we don't live by the Logos. We live by the Rhema. The Rhema is the spoken word of God. Hallelujah. So meditate on the word, but let's keep on reading. It says here, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So Joshua ordered the officers of the people to go through the camp and tell the people, get your provisions ready. Three days from now, you will cross over the Jordan and you will take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you for your own. Now, before I I come here today is I just really sensed that it was important to pray for people that are actually believing for land, people that are believing for houses, land, property. Is there anyone here that you're believing in this year to buy a house, to buy land, to buy property? Is there anyone? Would you be able to stand up? I actually just really feel in particular... Um, to pray for this. If you're believing, it's like you're believing for a home, um, that there's a, there's a shift in this area, you're believing for a home. Let's just pray um, for these guys. Why don't you just extend your hand um, to these guys? So Lord God, right now, we thank you, Lord, that you are our supply, Lord. And so right now, God, I thank you for each one of these people, Lord, that are believing you for the right property, for the right home, for the right land, for the right open doors. I just declare open doors in Jesus' name, that 2024 is the year of the open door. And so, God, we thank you, Lord, that your word says that you open doors, no man can close, and closed doors, no man can open. And so in the name of Jesus, I even ask for wisdom for strategy, for ideas, Lord, on, on, on how to partner with you to actually occupy the, the, the actual physical land, Lord, that you are wanting to give to your people. So, Lord, I pray, God, Lord, that there would be, this would come, that it would be done, that the doors would open in Jesus' mighty name, and that each one of these individuals would actually occupy and inherit the land, the home, the property that you've called them to occupy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. So, so good. Uh, And so it it continues on here and it says, uh, but the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, Joshua said, remember the command that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you after he said, The Lord your God will give you rest by giving you this land. Your wives, your children, and your livestock uh, may stay in the land that Moses gave you east of the Jordan. But all of your fighting men, get ready for battle. You must cross over ahead of your fellow Israelites. You are to help them until the Lord gives them rest. Who knows, sometimes we've got to help each other get the land. <laughs> as, as he has done for you, and until they have taken possession of the land the Lord your God has given them. After that, you may go back and occupy your own land, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you east of the Jordan towards the sunrise. And then they answered Joshua, whatever you have commanded us, we will do. And wherever you send us, we will go. Just as we fully obeyed Moses, so will we fully obey you. Only may the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Whoever rebels against your word and does not obey it, whoever, um, whatever you may command them will be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. So God here is actually um, uh, rolling out to the Israelites this desire that he has for them to occupy their own land. But I actually suggest to you is, is that this, this wasn't just something that was a natural thing that was taking place. 
In fact, God actually had enemies and giants that the, that the Israelites were actually going to go into the land and by occupying the land, they were actually dealing with spiritual dynamics that was standing against the plans and the purposes of God. In, in fact, we actually read about this concept of, 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 of occupation in Luke chapter 19, verse 11. So come with me to Luke chapter 19, verse 11. I just want to um, pick up on some things here. So it says here, Jesus is speaking to these people in Luke chapter 19, verse 11. And it says, while they were listening to this, he went on to tell them a parable because he was near Jerusalem and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. So the, these people are all around Jesus and, and, and they're there and, and they're thinking, come on, Jesus, you know, um, you know we, we, we're going to help you get your throne established. You know, let's get your throne established in Jerusalem. In fact, it's actually comical because we read about the disciples and, and the disciples are competing for the second position. Do you guys know this? That it's like they're like, you know, we're competing. You know, who's going to sit at the right hand of Jesus? And Because they, they've got this mentality in their minds that Jesus is going to set up his kingdom the same way that kings and, and Caesars had done it, you know, time and time and time again. But who knows is that God's ways are not our ways and his thoughts are, are not our thoughts. It's his ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So these guys have got this idea that Jesus is just going to come. He's going he's gonna to do it in this moment and we can just sit back and Jesus is going to do it all. But who knows is, is that Jesus Jesus had a different plan. <laughs> it is Jesus wasn't going to do it this way. In, in fact, one of the things that I um, really have always, it's been a most puzzling question was it's like, why did Jesus have to go back to the right hand of the Father when he rose from the dead? Who knows, Jesus rose from the dead on the third day. He, 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 he spoke with over 500 eyewitnesses seeing that he'd risen from the dead. But why didn't he just stay here? You know, like it was a question I had. But the Bible actually gives us the answer to it. The Bible says this, is, is that Jesus says to his disciples, he said, unless I go, the helper can't come. You see, Jesus was a man who was 100% God and he was 100% man. The Bible actually says, though, that he laid his divinity aside. When, when, when Jesus actually walked the earth, it was a picture of what's available when a man, Jesus, was 100% yielded to the Holy Spirit. He had the Holy Spirit within him. In fact, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus. But also the Bible says that Jesus, he did everything that he's seen his father do. Is as Jesus was here, he was actually demonstrating what is possible for somebody who is totally filled with the Holy Spirit and totally in alignment with what God was saying over his life. You see, Jesus was actually looking for a day where he would put his spirit in every person that would call upon the name of the Lord. This is why Jesus says, he, he, he says to his followers and he says to his disciples, he said, I want you to wait in Jerusalem until you receive power from on high. And we read in Acts chapter 2 verse 1 that the 120 were gathered in the upper room and the Bible says they were all of one accord in one one place and the Bible says that the Spirit of God came like a rushing wind and the Holy Spirit came and filled them. It filled the 120 and the 120 went out and the 120 become the 3,000. Why? Because the Holy Spirit was now living inside of each one of these people. Are you following me? I believe that Jesus was actually seeing a day. I've made a way for the Holy Spirit to get in you. I've made a way for hundreds of millions and even billions of people to be filled with my spirit. Are you, are you with me? Josh, um, Josh Suarez at the, um, at the conference we had, he actually, he, um, he, he preached on the verse in the Bible that says is that the kingdom of God is within you. 
and, and, and he went on, and I believe it was in the Passion Translation, but it goes on and it says, the kingdom of God is within you. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is within you. The Spirit of Jesus is within you. The Spirit, and, and he said, in some of you it's expanding. Isn't that a thought, hey? The kingdom of God is within you, and in some of you it's expanding. You see, here's the thing, is the Israelites... We're going to have to make this shift. Just like the early church had to make this shift is is that Jesus wants to come upon you and Jesus wants to live in you to see his plans and purposes prevail. Are you with me? Like Jesus wasn't just going to like, hey guys, you just, you know, just sit down, just let me do it. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this thing. I'm going to roll out my kingdom. No, Jesus says, I'm going to put my spirit in you so that you can, in partnership with me, in relationship with me, see my plans and purposes prevail. You see, the Israelites are in the desert and they're sitting there and, and God's got a relationship with Moses. And God is supernaturally providing for the Israelites. It's like the Israelites just wake up, they're in their tents, and then plop, you know, the, the manna shows up, the quail shows up. It's easy, you know, it's just like, it's just like boom, you know, it's just bang, instant, instantaneous. God's just showing up instantaneously and, and, and he's providing. But who knows, there was a shift that had to happen in the promised land. Because, because the Bible actually says is when the Israelites crossed from the wilderness into the promised land, is the manna stopped? Is the quail stopped? Is their, is their shoes began to actually wear out? And their clothes began to wear out. Why? It's not because God had forgotten about them. It wasn't because God was not planning on supernaturally supplying everything they needed. It was that God was saying, I want to come now and I want to supernaturally breathe upon your work. I want to supernaturally partner with you now. I'm not going to give you the quail and I'm not going to give you the manna and I'm not going to give you the shoes, but I'm going to give you everything that's required to see that happen. And I'm actually going to add the super to your natural. Are you with me? Because, because here's the thing, is, is that there's so many people out there that are like, oh, I'm just waiting for, for a miraculous sign from God. Is if you're not doing anything in the natural, God can't put his super to your natural to see, so the world can see what God is doing in and through your life. Are you with me? Because this was the shift. There was a mentality they had to go from, God's just going to drop it in front of us, to now God is supernaturally giving them the ability to create wealth. He is supernaturally giving them the ability. You see, uh, the shift that happened, he's not giving them the manna. He's not giving them the quail, but he gave them the seed. He gave them the land and he gave them the expertise. Are you with me? Is God was now in supernatural partnership, wanting these guys to engage in, 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 in this process with him. Are, are you with me? I've, I've seen so many people, and this is a thing, we're going to get into it now, but I've seen so many people that have received a word from God. And most of the time, they are accurate. You know, has anyone seen that? It's like, you know, I've got this prophetic word over my life. You know, God's going to do this for me. You know, this is what God spoke. You know, I remember having this guy. I knew this guy. Um, I still know him. Um, haven't caught up with him for a while, but... Um, but anyway, every time I'd catch up with him, he'd say, I'd say, oh, so what's God saying to you? And he said, oh, well, God's actually said that I'm going to be writing seven-figure checks to be able to bless people, you know? And, um, and I'm like, that's awesome, you know? <laughs> sign me up for that, you know? God's going to allow me to sign seven-figure checks to bless people. And so I'd catch up with this guy over and over and over again, you know, months and years and and, and weeks, and, and, I, and I'd catch up with him and say, oh, so, so what's happening? He says, yeah, I'm, I'm still believing God that I'm going to sign these seven-figure checks. And I did this journey with him for, for about three years, and one of the things I noticed is, is that nothing was changing in his life. And, and he said, oh, yeah, God said I'm going to sign seven-figure checks. And, and this one day, out of honestly, out of pure frustration, I actually, I actually sit there and I said, 
so you're going to sign seven-figure checks. What's your paycheck right now? And he said, um, I make $2,000 a week. And I said, well, that's, that's awesome. So what, what are you doing with the $2,000 a week? He says, oh, I, can barely, I can barely get by off $2,000 a week. And I said, are you crazy? Like, you can't get off, you know, $2,000 a week. And I, I remember just saying to him, I said, well, here's the thing. If I was God, and I'm not God, but if I was God, and, and if, if I gave you, you $2,000 and you can't even steward that, how on earth are you going to steward seven figures? Are you with me? Yeah. Because this guy did not realise that God had given him everything he needed in seed form to fulfil the word of God over his life. But because he was despising the day of small beginnings, he did not engage in a supernatural process with God to actually see the word of the Lord fulfilled over his life. And, you know, one of my peeves is seeing people all over the place. I've got this word of God over my life. God's spoken this. And, but they're sitting back on the couch eating their ice cream and popcorn, thinking it's just going to drop in their lap like manna. And God says, what have I put in your hand? What have I put in front of you? Because I want to engage in a supernatural process with you now. Who knows, the fulfilment of the miracle is not the only miracle. The process in order to get there is also a miracle. And I feel the Lord is wanting to shift our perspective where we get out of this wilderness mentality, expecting God just to do everything and us actually engaging in the ways of God and in how he operates and actually realizing that God has given you right now everything you need to fulfill what he wants you to do. Are you with me? This is a good word, <laughs> believe it or not. I, 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 remember, um, I remember this, this guy, I heard this, um, I, I heard this guy, he, he, um, he had these teeth problems. I might have shared this with you before, but he has these teeth issues. And, um, and so anyway, he goes to this healing conference and again, I'm, I'm in today, I'm in no way wanting to put a fire blanket on signs, wonders, miracles, and the miraculous. In fact, if we get a hold of this, we're going to see an explosion in signs, wonders, and miracles because this is what actually is going to initiate it. Are you with me? So this guy goes to this healing conference. He's got issues with his teeth, you know, and he shows up there and he's like, I've just got to go forward and I've got to get prayer for my teeth. And so he walks up. And there's this, there's this prophetic guy that's there and he's praying for people. And so he comes up the front and the guy says, you know, you know what do you need? And he says, I need a miracle in my teeth. So this guy lays a hand on his shoulder and as he does, he has this open vision of this tube of Colgate and this toothbrush. I'm, and, and, and he's praying for him and, and he's like, and this guy's like, oh, what are you saying? Are you saying And he says, yeah, I actually am. I don't know whether you're going to like what I've actually got to say to you. And, and he says that I believe that the miracle, that your miracle is actually tied to you going and getting a tube of, of Colgate, applying the toothpaste to your toothbrush, brushing your teeth twice a day, and God's going to add his super to your natural, and the guy was healed. Are you with me? Yeah. You see, have you ever read through the Gospels how, you know, Jesus, he, th th there's that leper. Yeah, was it Naaman, the leper? And, and, and there's the leper there. And Jesus says to him, he says, go and dip yourself in this dirty, stinky river seven times. Yeah. You know, notice how Jesus doesn't say, bam, you know, you're instantly healed. Now, I, I believe that. But Jesus was more interested in a process of obedience for Naaman that was going to lead to the breakthrough. And I sense the Lord is actually, for each one of us individually and corporately, he's wanting to bring us into a place where we actually engage this supernatural process with God, which is going to lead to the breakthrough. It's going to lead to the miracle. Come on, somebody. I, I remember when I was... Um, I was actually, uh, you know, single back in those days. I was, um, I was single and just, you know, I was, I was just happy, you know, for most of it. I feel like the Lord protected me for a long time. And then all of a sudden, you know, something awoke and I was like, man, I wouldn't mind a wife. Uh, uh, but, but, you know, I remember through that time, and, and, and I've shared this with you guys before, but in my season of singleness, I remember praying to the Lord a lot and I just said, God, you know, you know it'd be nice if you just brought the right person along, you know, as a lot of people do. Um, but, you know, there was this phrase in my season of singleness 
that I believe helped me so much. And, and, and the phrase went like this. Is it's like, waiting is never wasted when you use it to prepare. You're with me. Waiting is never wasted when you use that time of waiting to prepare. And I remember thinking, instead of just sitting around on the couch, eating the ice cream and, you know, watching the rom-coms, not that I'd ever even do that anyway, but some people probably do, and just like, woe is me, why hasn't this happened? I was like, no, if I'm still single, what an awesome time to prepare for the miracle. Are you with me? And so I remember thinking, well, you know, well, what an awesome time to get in the Word of God. What an awesome time to get in the presence of God. What an awesome time to, to work on myself. I thought, you know, what an awesome time to make sure I'm in shape. You know, I'm, I'm you, know, you know, healthy and I'm fit. And, and I thought, what an awesome opportunity for that. And, and, you know, I thought, well, what an awesome opportunity to, to work on my finances as well. Because here's the thing, just a little indication is when you get married, it, it doesn't help you know, the, sometimes it helps the finances, but if you can't get your finances in order before you're married, you're not going to get it in order afterwards. Are, are you hearing me? And, 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 and I remember God taking me through this process of actually stewarding what he had put in front of me. Because if you're waiting on the word of the Lord, while you're waiting, get preparing. Because when you prepare, it provides a vacuum in which God can move to bring about the supernatural breakthrough. Are you with me? Yeah. Let's continue to read. And so um, so it continues on. While they're listening to him, uh, he went on to tell them this parable. And we can have um, the keys back if you want, and, and we'll, we'll begin to land the plane. Uh, are, are you going, what I really want to get across today is God is actually wanting us to partner with him in what we think is natural, but which is going to lead to a supernatural outcome. Yeah. Because, because the answer to the word of the Lord over your life is faithfully stewarding what God has put in your hands today. It goes on here, it says, He said, A man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king. This is, this is Luke chapter 19, uh, verse 12. And then to return... He called 10 of his servants and he gave them 10 miners. Put this money to work, he said, until I come back. Now, um, the King James translation, the New King James translation, actually say, occupy until I come. I, I believe that the, one of the words of the Lord over 2024 is this is a year to occupy. Are you with me? You know, so building your bunkers filled with baked beans or whatever, honestly, just trash it. <laughs> this is a year to occupy until he comes. Amen. And, and But he sent subjects who hated him and he sent a delegation after him to say, we don't want this man to be our king. I love this part. He was made king, however. You, you know, who knows? Who knows is, is that the kingdom is not a democracy. <laughs> it is, it is, is, is whether you want Jesus to be king or not, he's going to be king because he's the king. And, and it says here, then he sent for servants to whom he'd given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it. The first one came and said, sir, your miner has earned 10 more. Well done, my good servant. His master replied, because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter, take charge of 10 cities. Then the second one came to him and said, sir, your miner has earned five more. His master answered him, you take charge of five cities. Then another servant came to him and said, sir, here is your miner. I have kept it laid away in a piece of cloth and I was afraid of you because you're a hard man. You take out what you did not put in and you reap what you did not sow. His master replied, I will judge you by your own words, you wicked servant. You knew, did you, that I'm a hard man, taking out what I did not put in and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put my money on deposit so that when I came back, I could have collected it with interest? Then he said to those standing by, take this miner away from him. You imagine the communists and the socialists and the Marxists are going off their heads, but this is what happens. He said, take his miner away from him and give it to the one who has 10 miners. Sir, they said, he already has 10. <laughs> 
He replied, I tell you that to everyone who has, more will be given. But to the one who has nothing, even what they have will be taken away. But to those enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them, bring them here and kill them in front of me. Now, who knows is is that the Bible says when Jesus ascended is he gave gifts to men. But one of the most amazing gifts that he gave was actually the gift of the Holy Spirit is God has given to each one of us giftings, talents, dreams, abilities that he's put inside of you. But Jesus is going to come back one day and he's going to demand, he's he's going to demand uh, increase to what he's given you. In fact, it actually goes on to say that if you've stewarded well in the small, here's 10 cities. This is not me speaking, this is the word of God. (laughs) Here, take charge of five cities. You you know, I I just sense that the Lord is really just wanting us to get proactive and realize that within you, God has put giftings, talents, and abilities that if you just sit on it, nothing happens. But if you use it, what happens is His kingdom advances. I remember hearing this story, and this is going to help me tie everything together, but I remember hearing this story about a hotel room cleaner in the Bahamas. And this hotel room cleaner in the Bahamas, she was working for the Hilton Hotel in the Bahamas. And so she, was, she wasn't earning much money. Um, and, um, and anyway, on the weekends, she, she enjoyed making cookies. And so... And so anyway, her church has this conference this one weekend and this speaker comes to the church. They have a conference over the weekend. This lady shows up and she, and she you know, there's about a thousand people at this conference. This lady comes forward um, and, she, and she introduces herself to this speaker and she says, look, I'm inspired by what you're saying here tonight. I don't have any money, but what I do have, I'm going to give to you. And she had this little bag of cookies, you know, beautiful cellophane wrapping, you know, a nice name tag on it so that she knew what it was. And so anyway, um, that night she goes home and this speaker goes back to the hotel and he starts getting a bit hungry. And he's like, man, I could really, you know, I could really do with something, you know, just to, to fill me up. He had the munchies. And so he, he, he said, I've got these cookies, you know, that this lady gave him. And so he's like, so, so he's like, I'm going to have one. So he grabs his cookie and he puts this cookie in his mouth. And he's like, this is the best cookie I've ever eaten. And this guy's having an encounter with God in his hotel room. <laughs> Because this cookie is the nicest cookie I've ever had in my whole life. And so anyway, so the lady goes back to the conference the next morning. The speaker goes back to the conference. And that morning he he says, I can't go on here this morning, but could the lady who made that cookie last night, who gave me the cookies, could you stand up? And so this lady stands up and, and this guy prophesies over her and he says, God has given you a gift. (laughs) And the gift that he's given you is making cookies. And this gift is going to bring you before kings and it's going to open doors for you and you're going to be used to fund the kingdom of God and fund the purposes of God and fund the plans of God. And so she's sitting there, wow, that's crazy. I didn't know that my cookies would do this. And so anyway, the conference continues and so it gets to the end of the conference and... um, And so the conference finishes up. This lady goes home and she's sitting on the couch and she's thinking about this word that she's just received, that I've been given a gift. And and so she's sitting around and she thinks about it. Well, she's like, well, I've got an oven. I've got an oven in my kitchen. And she walks into a pantry and she's got some flour and she's got some chalk chips and she's got some butter and she's got some sugar. And she's like, well, well, I'm going to start... I'm going to start making me some cookies. And so she just starts making cookies. She gets the oven fired up. She gets the mixture happening. She gets the dough happening. And so she puts the cookies in the oven. And while she's doing that, she sends a text message around to all of her friends and family saying, hey, I've got these cookies that I'm selling for a dollar a bag. Would you like to Would you like to buy these cookies? And so anyway, while the cookies are still in the oven, she has ding, ding. She has the first couple of orders come through for these cookies. And so she's great. She tastes the 
cookies out of the oven. She wraps them up in this cellophane. You know, she puts a nice little tag on it. And so she goes and gives out these cookies. So one thing leads to another. And so she keeps getting these orders for cookies because everyone that eats the cookies is like, these cookies are the most amazing cookies that I've ever had. And so anyway, so, so this happens. She begins to get so many orders that she needs to put two people on to make these cookies. <laughs> And, and, and so not only does she do that, she has to buy another oven so that she can cook She can cook enough cookies for the demand of the cookies. And, and so she gets so busy making cookies for people that she goes into the Hilton Hotel and she says, look, here's the thing, I can't keep cleaning hotel rooms anymore because I'm so busy cooking these cookies that I just can't work here anymore. And she takes into the Hilton Hotel a little bag of her cookies with the cellophane, with the, with, the, with the label on the top, and she gives it to her manager at the hotel. Three days later, she gets a call from the manager of the hotel that, that says, what on earth do you put in these cookies? These cookies are the most amazing cookies that I've ever tasted in my life. I've talked to our team here at Hilton and we want to put these cookies in every room in our hotel. And so now this lady's like, oh my goodness, well, I'm going to have to put some more people on and get myself another oven because there's just this demand of cookies is going off. And so anyway, what ends up happening is the the CEO of a well-known supermarket chain happens to stay at the Hilton Hotel. He's there one night and he's like, I'm hungry. And he sees this bag of cookies and he goes over to this bag of cookies and he eats one. And he's like, that is the best cookie that I've ever eaten in my entire life. And he reads on the the logo on this bag and it has the name of this lady. And so he rings up this lady and he says, hey, I'm I'm the boss of this CEO chain. I've got supermarkets all throughout the Bahamas. Would you be interested in putting your cookies in our stores? And so she gets a contract to fill this supermarket chain with her cookies. Forward things, five years down the line, the speaker comes back to the church. This minister comes back to the church and, and he rolls up and he's, he's walking into the church and then this, then this Rolls Royce pulls up behind him in, in, the, in the parking lot and this lady steps out and, and, and he turns around and he's like, who's that? And this lady walks up to him and, and, and says, um, do you remember me? And he's like, look, I'm so sorry. I speak at a lot of conferences all over the place. I, I just can't remember. And she says... I was the one who gave you cookies when you're here five years ago. And he says, I remember you now. <laughs> and, and, this, and this lady um, proceeds to give him a $10,000 check and say, I want to thank you for the word that you spoke over my life because if you hadn't have spoken that word, I wouldn't have realized what God had put inside of me. And that woman, woman today is used to finance the kingdom and do things for the kingdom all over the place. And it's absolutely epic. What am I saying here today? I'm saying here today, don't despise the day of small beginnings because the word of God, the word that he's spoken over your life, it shall come to pass. But don't despise the flour that's in your pantry. Amen. Don't despise the sugar that's in your pantry. Don't despise the fact that you've got an oven. Come on. In, 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 your, in your kitchen, because God wants to use what you think is small. He wants to multiply it and he wants to use that gift that he's put in you to, to expand and advance his kingdom. Amen. If she had a sat on the couch and said, nice word, that's great. I don't think anything would have happened. You know, when we, we get a word of the Lord, it's actually an invitation into a process with God to see that fulfilled. And, and, and I sense the Lord is taking us from the wilderness to the promised land. And one of the things that is about to shift is this isn't just about receiving the manna. Is God has given you the supernatural talents and abilities and he's wanting to breathe upon those gifts, upon those talents, upon those abilities so that his kingdom can come and that his will can be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Why don't we stand and we're going to pray as we finish up here today. Thank you, Lord. I even wonder this morning that as I've been sharing this, is maybe there's a maybe there's a dream, maybe there's a maybe it's a, it's it's a healing you need. 
Maybe it's a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a loved one that's far from the Lord. Maybe it's an issue within your school, an issue within your classroom, an issue within your business, whatever it might be. Is I believe that the Lord is wanting to release breadcrumbs. And I, and I believe that there's going to be breadcrumbs that even the Lord's going to release this week. And I see that God is releasing breadcrumbs that are going to lead to your miracle. And, and you've been sitting around thinking, why, God, hasn't this miracle happened? I've been praying for this person. Why hasn't it happened? And I believe the Lord's saying is, is that I'm going to engage a process with you that's going to lead to every word that I spoke over you coming to pass. I believe the Lord is actually saying is, is that, yep, that this, this season of, of the sporadic miracles has been awesome, but I believe we're coming into a time of, the, of a constant stream of miracles. But the constant stream of miracles is going to precede the constant journeying with Holy Spirit, the constant journeying with Jesus, saying, Jesus, I'm going to walk with you. I'm not just in this for what you can give me, but I'm in this because I believe that when I'm plugged into the vine, when I'm plugged into you, the fruit's going to flow. And, and so, and so if, if that's you right now, you're like, man, there's, there's this dream I've had. There's this thing that I've had. I even feel like the Lord is saying to some people, it's to time to get up off your backside and actually do something. Come on. I know this isn't a popular word, but it's not for everyone. But for some people, the Lord's just saying, it's time to get up off your backside and do something. It is, is, I love the analogy of the parked car. I don't know whether you've heard that analogy before, but the analogy of the parked car is a guy is sitting in his car and he's saying, oh God, would you show me where to go? Would you lead me? Would you guide me? Would you direct me? And God says, just stick your foot on the accelerator because while ever you're stationary, I can't direct you. But just get up and just do something. Do whatever you feel like you can do to begin to initiate the process. Because as you begin to move with me, is I'm going to take the wheel and I'm going to direct you. And even though you think you might be going in the wrong direction, is that even when you're going in the wrong direction, if you've got movement and you've got momentum, I can take the wheel and steer you into the direction you need to go. And so, Lord, I'm asking right now, Lord, that you would fill us with faith to grab hold of the breadcrumbs. Lord, that we would not despise the day of small beginnings. That we would not overlook what you've put in our hands already. And Lord, I ask God that we would see a wave of miracles coming. Lord, where, where we took our natural and you added your super to it and we just see supernatural occurrences breaking out all over this region, all over this community, all over this town, Lord God. And so, Father, I ask, Lord, for an injection of faith, an injection of hope, an injection of expectation. And Lord, where the enemies come in and, and said, oh, just sit, on, just sit on your talent. Just sit on your gift. I see people even opening up different businesses and I, I, see, I see a computer business being opened up. I see businesses beginning to open up. I even see uh, YouTube channels opening up. I just feel the Lord just saying, just test me. Just test me. Just keep taking that step forward and I'm going to direct you. You haven't misheard me. I feel the Lord saying that you haven't misheard me. But I so desire to initiate this process in your life because this process is going to develop in you the character that's going to be required so that when you get there is you're going to be able to hold it down. So, Lord, I ask, Father, that, Lord, that as for us, Lord, as for this people, that we would not be people that just sit on our talents, sit on our gifts, Lord. 
We want to hear those words, well done, my good and faithful servant. Let us be good stewards, Lord. Let us be used everywhere we go. Why don't you put your hand on your heart? You feel comfortable to put your hand on your heart? Let's uh, do that. So right now, Holy Spirit, I ask that you would initiate, initiate this word, Lord. Lord, I pray that we wouldn't just merely be hearers of the word, but that we would be doers of the word. That, Lord, that you would put your fire power. And here's the thing. The Lord is saying this. He's saying it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, declares the Lord. And I see the Holy Spirit's going to come upon you. You might be thinking, oh, well, I've already got, I've already got a full-time job. I'm already working eight hours a day. Well, eight hours a day isn't a full-time job. You've got 16 hours in the day if you have eight hours sleep. God wants to use you. And so, Lord, I ask right now for an injection of faith, for an injection of boldness, Lord God, that, Father, that as your ecclesia, Lord, that we would partner with you. Lord, that we would, that we would exercise everything that you've given to us, Lord. Lord, I declare open doors, Lord, that this week is a week of favour. This week is a week of breakthrough. This week is a week of answered prayers. We thank you, God, that we're not waiting for it, but we're walking in it. And so, God, I ask in the name of Jesus that you would shift us from waiting for it to walking in it, God, that we would begin to start walking in this supernatural process that you're inviting us into. Lord, let us walk so closely with with you, Holy Spirit. Lord, let us be led by every word that precedes your mouth, God. And and Lord, I I pray, Father, Lord, that that even disappointments would go. Lord God, where there's been disappointments from the past, disillusionment from the past, we declare that gone in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, that there is an awesome future awaiting those who walk with you. There's an awesome future awaiting those that partner with you. And so we thank you for everything you're doing right now. Lord, I ask God that for every one of us, Lord, that the kingdom of God would be expanding within us. And it wouldn't just expand within us, but it would go out from us and it would begin to transform the atmosphere around us, Lord. Lord, I pray for the Holy Spirit to come on us this morning in such a measure that when we walk out of this place, people see that there's something different on our life. People feel that there's something different on our life, that when we walk into the room, the atmosphere is going to shift. When we walk into the supermarket, the atmosphere is going to shift. When we walk into depression, we, we bring hope, we bring life, and we bring transformation. When we bring in, when we walk into faithless situations, we bring faith, hope, and expectation. And so God, I'm asking that Holy Spirit this morning, that you would pour out your spirit in a radical measure, Lord God, that Father, that we would never be the same again. Lord, that your kingdom would come and that your will would be done here in circular head as it is in heaven and also to the regions beyond, Lord. I thank you even for the visitors that have come here today. Lord, I pray that as they get sent back into their workplaces, Lord, into their cities, into their towns, into their communities, I thank you, Lord, that there is a fire that is coming upon your people, Lord. You said that you would pour out your spirit without measure and so Holy Spirit, I'm asking here this morning that we would receive a fresh dose, that Lord, from our bellies would flow rivers of living water, that as we walk out of this place, Lord, Lord, that there would be something that just begins to initiate in us, Lord, that the days of waiting for it would stop, that the wilderness mentality would stop, and that the promised land mentality would begin, Lord. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just pour it out, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. So good. Well, thank you, Lord. Just don't have
have a no where to go now, you know. It's because that song, you know, there's nothing worth more. We just sing that for a minute, maybe. Let's sing this together. Mm. We're about to close in just a minute. It's really close. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's nothing worse than more, you know. That Thank you, Lord. We're just going to sing this briefly, and and we're going to close on this song. But but next week, um, if you've got a ute or a trailer or something that can cart things, bring it because we're about to shift all of our gear into our new building on the 20, 20, 31st of March. We're going to be in our own building. Amen. After nine years, we're moving in. Come on. We're occupying the land. And so if you've got the ability to bring a trailer or a ute next week, we'd appreciate you doing that. We're going to shift some things down. Um, other than that, let's sing this song and you guys are all blessed. Have released. Amen.